Due to the sensitive nature of the content, some of the language in this video may be substituted to avoid suppression from YouTube's algorithm. No, and I know you're probably going to post this on your Instagram or whatever it is you can. I don't know what you want, Ben. You want me to be in your phone. Is yeah. that what you want? All right, we have a lot to go over in this video, so let's just get right into it. So the Antwerp's former videographer, Ben, created an Instagram account called Rolling With The Devil after seeing the way that the group had been responding to Johnny's diss track. Ben showed off external hard drives and said he would be working on a documentary about who the Antwerp really is. In the caption, dedicated to Ninja, Ben wrote, man up and turn on your comments, or better yet, give me a call. This being because they had disabled their comments after people started finding out about the controversy and commenting about it on their posts. The group didn't turn the comments back on, however, Yolandi did end up giving Ben a call. Hello? Hello? Hi. It's, Hi. It's Yolandi. Can Hi. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. How are you doing? Hi. I'm cool. How's What's that? up, Ben? John, John just called me. He said you're looking for me urgently. What's going on? Dude, we need to have a chat, dude. Is Ninja around? All three of us. You, me, and Ninja. No, Ninja's not here. Okay. One of the things that Ben wanted to achieve from the phone call was for the group to apologize for the things that they had been posting to the millions of followers about Johnny, but Yolandi was not about it. I would like you to apologize to everyone, including your fans, for your behavior, for victimizing and bullying a freaking young girl like that. Ben? Dude, you know, like, if I told people what no, you ben, did in Australia... 16 is gross. She attacked our daughter. She didn't call your daughter gross. Really? Okay, let's do a little fact check because Yolandi said that Johnny called 16 gross. By the way, 16 is Yolandi's daughter. But what actually happened? You said you fucking picked me because I look like your daughter 16. You're disgusting, pedophile cunt. I'm not sure if Yolandi is genuinely misunderstanding the song or if she's purposely cutting off the context surrounding the song because I guess if you do play the part just 16 you're disgusting and that's all you listen to then yeah sure I guess that does sound like a diss on 16 but that's just kind of nonsensical because the entire song is about ninja you know she goes you're disgusting da -da 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 -da. we know who that's about she didn't call your daughter gross yes she did thing. did she what did she, she say she did and she attacked 16 and that is, how do you think 16 feels about all that? I don't know, but know she was she making... Was a lie. She was she making... She to get attention. Dude, come on, let's be honest. Zani does look a lot like 16, for starters. Uh, the homie really went there. Now, for reference, this is a side by side of both 16 and Johnny in 2013. <laughs> After Johnny, Ninja dated a model named Bianca Brombin who played White Cat for their music video Pitbull Terrier. White Cats! And some people have pointed out that Bianca also resembles 16. Now this is a bit of a sidetrack, but do you guys remember when Sony was hacked? That major hack attack against Sony. First, the studio's movies were leaked, and now private emails are going public. Well, amongst those emails that were leaked were some of Ninja's emails to Sony's top executives and producers. This particular email to Amy Pascal and Michael Linton was short and cute. It just said, love you, miss you, aww. Another email shows Ninja asking if he could get hooked up with Breaking Bad director Vince Gilligan for the TV show he wanted to produce called Zef TV. Zef TV was a TV show idea that Ninja wanted to produce with the help of Sony and his pitch is the reason why I brought this up in the first place. So let's check this out. Zef will be presented in the guise of a reality TV show. However, Zef will also contain highly addictive supernatural drama that slowly but surely gets revealed to get people fanatically hooked on Zef for five hot seasons. Zef is also a musical, kind of like The Sound of Music. Just not so corny, more street, next level as fudge. And also, the biggest TV series in the history of television. Zef begins when two strange rock stars from Africa move to Los Angeles, USA. Their names are Ninja and Yolandi. Image.png. Ninja and Yolandi rap in a group called The Antwerp, which means the answer. The Antwerp are busy blowing the fudge up. Image.jpg. Worldwide! Although Ninja and Yolandi's new rockstar lifestyle seems to be pumping off its face from the outside. Dun dun dun. Behind the scenes there is mad fudging juicy drama popping off 24-7. Mad juicy drama behind the scenes. Yeah, I can see it. For instance, Ninja and Yolandi are brother and sister. <laughs> Okay then. But around 10 years ago, Ninja and Yolandi found out from their strict Bible bashing parents that they were both adopted. Okay, so we know for a fact that Ninja was not adopted. However, Yolandi was and she had very strict religious parents. It seems to me that Ninja wants to create some confusion and blur the line of what's real and what isn't in this 
fantasy dilemma of his reality TV show. Ninja and Yolani got super duper mad with their parents. They drank themselves into stupor. Then Ninja and Yolani did very naughty things by accident. And Yolani got pregnant and had a daughter that they named Sixteen. This kind of reminds me of a clip that I found on YouTube. Uh-uh. Nah. We had a kid together by, you know, by accident and we are good mommy and daddy. But the thing is, the aunt was kind of like the main f***ing thing, you know, that's the f***ing... That's where it's at, you know, relationships are like whatever, you know. He said we had a kid together, but, you know, by accident. Shut the f*** up, yo! Yo, Landy, yo, Landy! You're kicking it up, you close the door! Isaac Newton, yo, shut the f*** yeah. <laughs> a little while after this, Ninja and Yolandi adopted a strange kid from an African ghetto called Toki who believes he is the devil. When Ninja wrote this email, Toki was only 13 years old and I understand that this is just a pitch for a TV show with fantastical taboo themes that never ended up happening. However, the portrayal of Toki that believes he's a, a devil boy didn't end there. It continued onward until present day, you know, or, or at least these themes of showing Toki in a violent and negative light. For example, in this image that Yolani had posted, he's seen with a knife saying, play now, cry later. Ninja shared this one with a caption that says, hi, my name is Toki, I tell lies, with 666 on the shirt. Now, if he believes that he's the devil, as you say, it's because you're implanting it on his head. I mean, he didn't buy that shirt for himself. I bought Toki this paintball gun for his birthday today, and he took it for a walk through the hood just now, and like 10 private security guards just came to my gate to tell me that Toki was pointing a gun at people sitting at the restaurant restaurants up the road and telling him he's going to kill him. Who buys her 13 year old kid a giant paintball gun, lets him roam around town and then to top it off, posts about it on Facebook. And he ended the post with F kids because you know of course it is the kid's fault, not the parent who raises him and bought him a giant paintball gun. But hey, you notice a pattern by now. Classic ninja, failing to take accountability. Or, or I mean, it could have been Yolandi that posted it, because it is on the DeAntford Facebook page. And in this image, Ninja says, found this filthy, dirty little street kid, took him home, washed him, and never gave him back. Now contrast those photos to some of the pictures that they share of 16, their biological daughter. In this one, Ninja's holding her body, and it says, I got you, heart. And in this much older one, he says, daddy's girl, X. Then there's this picture of the three of them captioned, hashtag fam. There's just a drastic difference in the way that they depict Toki versus the way that they portray their biological daughter. Overall, it seems like the only times that they ever show Toki is when they want to depict him as this like creepy or violent kid. Whereas with 16, there's always just photos of him being loving towards his daughter. With his arm around her, holding her, directing music videos in which 16 plays her own mother. And it's not the first time that 16 has emulated her mother's looks either. Ugh, we're getting sidetracked off the sidetrack. Let's get back into the TV show pitch, huh? So the Zeph TV series begins when Ninja and Yolandi move into a big house in Los Angeles, USA with 16 and Toki to begin their new lives, living the American dream. But as usual, the drama continues. Ninja's hot new blonde six foot two supermodel girlfriend Bianca comes to visit. Finally, the reason why I wanted to go through the email in the first place because he literally uses his ex-girlfriend's real name in the TV show pitch. When Ninja and Yolandi tour the world with The Antwoord, Ninja gets in situations over and over again backstage with psycho fangirls dot 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 who keep showing Ninja their boobs, bums, and private parts in the hope that Ninja will want to get busy with them. But Ninja ends up fagging out every time and whatsapping Bianca instead to tell her how much he misses her. Back in LA, Ninja and Yolandi have hooked up with a mysterious rap producer called Chaos. Chaos doesn't like getting credited on songs with his name. Instead, he always gets credited on the rap tracks he spawned with his mysterious Chaos symbol. By the way, Chaos isn't just a clever name for a mysterious rap producer. Chaos is a reference to Chaos Magic, the symbolic and ritualistic magical practice. And that's magic with a K, not like stage performance magic you would see from David Copperfield or Chris Angel. And if you're a fan of the group and you've paid close attention to their posts, you may have noticed how they have openly spoken about applying magic to their music. In fact, in the music video for Ugly Boy, you'll notice that Yolandi sits on a man's lap who has a sweater with a Chaos symbol. Another music video directed by Ninja. And later on in his TV show pitch, he also wrote in that little Yolandi develops a massive crush on chaos. In this post about their Donker Mag album, Ninja says, Dear children, Ninja and Yolandi are in high-tech studio every day working hard on our most powerful spell yet. And by the way, Donker Mag means dark force or dark power in Afrikaans. Ninja continues, We thought we would be finished by this time, but we kept making up new songs by accident. This is so good, so, so good. I want to get stoned and bump that Donker Mag worse than anyone. Again, don't worry, 
You won't be sorry for long. Our first single features one of my dearest friends in the whole universe. One cannot rush such powerful magic. Oh look, he's got his daughter's name tattooed on his face. To my understanding, chaos magic consists of creating sigils, which are the symbols that you often see in the Antwerp's music videos. This is all rabbit hole type of stuff that we can get into some other video. But, um, or you can get into on your own when you're watching because there is so much, man. I have learned so much just by doing these videos on my own. Ninja also sent another email with a subject line saying, Zef, is it real? The Zef TV show will be presented like a reality TV show, but this Zef reality TV show is kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing because right from the beginning, something is not quite right with these two strange rap rave superstars. Why do their eyes go black when they rap? Why does Ninja's cell phone float through the air into his hand when he reaches for it? Why is the Antwerp blowing up so hard worldwide? Did Ninja and Yolandi sell their soul to the devil to get so good at rap? <laughs> so good? Are Ninja and Yolandi really brother and sister? So many juicy questions. What is the Antwerp? There's this ongoing theme in Ninja's writing that makes me wonder why is he so persistent in wanting to blur the line with reality and, and art in making Yolani his sister that he hooks up with. Because again, this isn't just depicted in his TV show pitch that he wanted to go on for five seasons. We also see Yolani play his little sister in the music video for Babies on Fire and generally play a young girl in many other music videos, all directed by Ninja. My accent is very often Ninja. What is that? I don't know what Anyways, after Ninja dates Bianca, he moves on to another one of his thousand girlfriends. I had about a thousand girlfriends, actually. That's oh. like 3,000 girlfriends. This is Gala, an Australian model who also played twerking rat girl in the group's Tommy Can't Sleep short film. I don't know, man. To me, it looks just like his daughter. This is all getting weird. Let's just go back to the phone call. Okay, dude, listen, first of all, when you hooked up with Dev Patel from the, like, Tappy movie, Ninja and I sat in his car while he was playing the new album. He told me all about your sex encounter, everything that happened with that, how funny it was. And he told me all about Donnie as well. Okay. But also, this is my footage. I've got a lawyer. I own it 100%. And I'm giving you an option. I'm giving you an option just to be like, cool, Ben, f you, whatever. You hate me. And that's fine. And I get on with my movie and do what I've got to do. Dude. I really don't hate you. So, I mean, I don't know why you hate me so much. And, I mean, I can't really do anything about it. It's the but way you're behaving, Yolandi. No, I'm behaving what? I'm defending my family. Why are you making people... For, for something they didn't do. Ben confronted Yolandi about her behavior. And honestly, if this phone call was all we know about the situation, I think it would be so easy to side with Yolandi, you know? And this in this conversation, she sounds... Pretty rational, you know? If someone's attacking your daughter, of course you want to defend them. But then you remember the ways that she went about defending her family. Hi, my name is Yolandi Fisser, and, and I'm in a cult. Shioni is a Satanist and an online prostitute, okay? Catfish, sugar catfish. Catfish, sugar catfish. You're feeling okay, Flash? Feeling amazing. For sure. What about what about all the <laughs> and the torture? How's that? But I just wanted you guys to know that I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did, did you read those How messages? You that your daughter was attacked, dude. You How would you feel? You don't have children. You, like, you don't understand. And like, how would you feel, Ben? I wouldn't it's have... Cool thing to do to make up lies. Ben tries to ask Yolandi if she had seen the messages that Ninja was sending to Johnny. And Yolandi kind of blows it off. But I don't want you guys to forget the things that Ninja was saying to Johnny. So let's have a quick recap, shall we? He says, don't be shy of me, forward girl. Do you wish I was your real dad? Do you like it that I'm actually your dad? She says, it's cute you like entertaining the thought. And he said, wank. What would you do if you were adopted and you found out that I got a chick pregnant when I was 17 or something, and then you found out I'm actually your dad? Like you find out you were actually adopted. What would you do? Five minutes later, and he says, hello? <laughs> she responds by saying, um... First of all, the way Ninja spoke to Zani, right? 
Do you think that those messages he, are I alive? What, yeah, he spoke to her because she went online and said she was in traffic, which is an outright lie. She never Did said she was... Ra- she never said she was... I went through this like yes, several times. Send me a... If you send, if you send me a shot that I where she said... I don't want to send me a screen She said this numerous times. That's what everybody was like going on about. Dude, show me where she said she was raped. Ben keeps trying to confront Yolandi about the messages that Ninja had been sending to Johnny. And at first, Yolandi seems to have a bit of a Freudian slip. She says, I don't know what he... And then, even weirder, she switches the story to, yeah, Ninja spoke to her because she said X, Y, and Z. But it's weird because Ninja actually did not speak to Johnny ever since Johnny spoke up about her story online. That's That didn't happen at all. And Yolandi keeps pushing this false narrative that Johnny was right, saying that she said it numerous times. But that's an absolute lie. In fact, when Johnny did her interview on the channel No Jumper, Adam, the interviewer, straight up asked her if she was And this is what she said. Everyone right, but like, I mean, it comes in a lot of different forms. Do, do, you, do you feel like it was different in your situation because you like pursued a relationship to an extent or a friendship and then that, the things went out of hand? Because I'm pretty sure that still completely qualifies yeah. as, but I mean, I, I guess I understand how you. I, I come from like a real rough upbringing, like, hearing because i never like processed it in that way you know and then like hearing like i've I've told people what's happened and that's like the feedback that i've gotten and that's the word that keeps on being used and i'm just like kind of taken aback by it you know like i guess yeah he strangled the out of me and me like a possessed demon i guess like strangling his assault we were having sex like i don't know once again i'm not sure if yolani is genuinely misunderstanding what johnny has said or if she's voluntarily choosing to omit information from johnny's narrative in order to create her own and continue to make straw man arguments in my opinion i think that a reason why yolani and ninja seem to dramatize and exaggerate johnny's claim so much and keep using the r word back and forth is because that way they can laugh at it you know make it seem so ridiculous so when they publish it to their platforms with millions of fans they'll believe them because they also have the bigger microphone you know the way they t- tell the story it's easy to hear like oh yeah of course yeah i believe you oh my god that's funny but when you start to listen to the actual details then you start to realize wait maybe there's something up with these guys why are there little holes in their story why do they keep lying about little things that don't need to be lied about right can i give you one word are you ready Panama, no, you're a bad person, listen babe. to this, Yolandi, like, so listen to like, this, you, Panama you, you kinda... Papers, Panama oh. Papers, you don't know what the Panama Papers are now, when the new government in South Africa changes and the rules change, you could go to jail for that, you've stolen South African culture for your videos and then you steal tax, you don't pay tax, dude that's massive, it's fucking massive, it's bigger than you can even imagine, and you're just talking dumb to me as if you fucking don't know anything I'm talking about. Why are you doing this? I really don't, Dave. I don't know what Panama is, and I don't know you what You don't know what the Panama is. Papers are. Panama, a country you think about so little, you don't realize that's not Panama, that's the outline of a Scotty dog. <laughs> this is Panama. Personally, I didn't know much about the Panama Papers before this whole series began, so it definitely added a layer of interest for me. We turned out of the banking bombshell causing shockwaves around the world, the so-called Panama Papers. So the Panama Papers are internal documents from a law firm called Mossack Fonseca, which specialized in creating offshore accounts. If you visit the Offshore Leaks database website, you will find that Ninja and Yolandi created a shell company called Zef Touring Worldwide Limited under the Mossack Fonseca law firm in the British Virgin Islands, a place where you don't have to pay taxes. Now this is interesting to me because both Ninja and Yolandi often talk about how much they love their home country. You know, in one of their music videos, they said the history of South Africa is Nelson Mandela, District 9, and Antwerp. So to see that they both have offshore bank accounts in a place with no taxation kind of sounds like tax evasion to me. But I mean, I have a degree in psychology, not economics, and the South African Revenue Service does not mess around. So I'm sure they're doing everything by the books. No, I know you're probably going to post this on your Instagram or whatever it is you can. I don't know what you want, Ben. You want me to be in your film. Is that what you want? I want you and Ninja to be in my film and let me ask you several questions in my film. Straight up. I hear you're in in America. Get a flight to London. I don't want to. I'm not going to be in your film, Ben. Okay, that's fine. If you're not going to be in. So so, So what is it you want me to do? Be in the film or what? Well, 
bend my film or make a public apology, apology to the guy I'm in not Australia. apologizing. I didn't do anything wrong. So what else do you want? Yolanda, me to you're do? lying to my face right now and you are... I'm act- not in your face. I'm on a phone. Okay. Oh! I'm not in your face. I'm on a phone. <laughs> Thank goodness for some comic relief, Yolani. Thank you so much, because this conversation was getting way too tense. Basically, Ben wanted Ninja and Yolani to participate in the film by answering some questions relative to the footage that he has. And honestly, in a journalistic point of view, it, it does make sense, you know, to have their perspective if a large point of the documentary would be about them, you know? It, it, it would make it less biased, because that way we can hear what they have to say about whatever Ben has. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's very important to support this, you know, so the YouTube algorithm knows to push it out. Let everybody know because it's 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 very scary and a little bit unnerving to know that I'm like the one headlining the story. So uh, l- let's just try to get it out there, you know, maybe other people will pick up on it. Um, the next video is gonna be going over Deanne's words justification over their casual racial remarks and many more things, so get ready. Dude, what you said about Whitney Houston, do you remember? Hello? Whitney Houston? I don't know. No.